Good evening, I'm Ryan Doyle filling in for Michael Corrin. Over the last two weeks, I've been fascinated by two political lives. One was a political life celebrated, that of a man known to those he served as a man of the people. The other, a political life that's just getting started, of a man who claims to understand Canadians and the country we live in, in a way that really nobody else has understood us. The memorial to former Premier Ralph Klein two weeks ago and the victory by Liberal leader Justin Trudeau this past weekend provided an interesting glimpse into two very different types of people. As dignitaries from all political spectrums took to the stage and shared stories and memories of King Ralph, you were left with the sense that this man was not just a politician, but someone that wanted to get to the pulse of those that put him in charge. Stories of how Klein would hold court at his table in the Louis Tavern part of the old St. Louis Hotel in Calgary, and Klein's local watering hole, made him seem real. They gave him an authenticity. He genuinely wanted to know what voters were thinking. And I was left with the feeling that people knew he was one of them. Trudeau, on the other hand, must have used the term friends to describe his followers at least 30 times in his victory speech. And you got the sense it was a word that was chosen by a handler, some backroom guy, to make Justin seem more sincere. Trudeau has appointed himself a servant of Canada, like somehow that will comfort Canadians and make us think he was lowering himself down to our level for a noble cause. He has spoken of his knowledge of our nation, having traveled from coast to coast, as if racking up air miles gives you an automatic understanding of who we are and what makes us tick. Worth noting, he didn't impress everyone this past weekend. In fact, 294,000 people signed up as Liberal supporters. 167,000 of them decided not to bother registering to vote in the first place. Both events should serve as a reminder that there is a distinct difference between a real fundamental connection and a pretentious put-on, one that Mr. Trudeau would have you believe is the genuine article. During one of the many tributes to Premier Klein, it was said that he understood that getting elected doesn't make you smarter than those who voted you in. Yet every word that is poured out of Mr. Trudeau's mouth has seemed like we were getting a lesson from a condescending professor, one where we were the children in the classroom lecturing us all on how bad we have it and how he would be the cure to all our woes. To his credit, Trudeau has attempted to address criticisms that his last name is all that's really brought him to this point in time. In a rare candid moment towards the end of his campaign, he even admitted that it was in fact about his dad. No sooner did he make that first and only honest admission during his quest to be the head liberal honcho, he launched into a flowery diatribe about how it's all about all of our parents and the legacy they left us, an opportunity lost to slay the elephant in the room. I'm not naive enough to think that in today's world of slick speak and teleprompter speeches that we should expect anything different from liberals like Justin Trudeau, who are more focused on gaining power then they are gaining a true understanding of how you feel. But in just two short weeks, we were able to witness two contrasting politicians, one that would roll up his sleeves, look you in the eyes over a meal of chicken and chips and maybe even a few pints, to try and gain a true understanding of who you were. The other, a man that thinks that flying into your town, shaking your hand, and reminding you of his political pedigree gives him the right to assume he understands you and this great nation of ours. Something to think about as the Liberals go forward with the Trudeau at the helm. Canadians want to be led, not ruled. They are tired of the negative, divisive politics of Mr. Harper's Conservatives. Ryan Doyle in for Michael Corrin this evening on the arena. That, of course, Justin Trudeau, your new Liberal leader. And I guess the big question now is, what's next? David Aiken, host of Battleground, joins us from Ottawa. Uh, David, what is next here? I mean, where does he go uh, from this point in time? Because, sure, he's got the gig. Now what does he do with it? Uh, that's a very good question. And there's a lot of work for Justin Trudeau or whoever would have won the contest yesterday. The Liberal Party as a machine really doesn't exist. As our friend Mark Dunn wrote in our papers today, it used to be a big red machine. It's now a little red wagon with a lot of rust on it. And what, he, what we mean by that is... 
The other two major parties, the New Democrats and the Conservatives, are very good at fundraising, very good at finding voters, identifying them, and getting from the polls. Conservatives better than New Democrats. New Democrats certainly better than the Liberals. And so one of the things Trudeau has to do uh, immediately, among many other things, is he has to go to his head office, Liberal Party headquarters, and really find people who are ready to put in place modern political machinery. People don't win elections nowadays based on big speeches. They base it on finding votes, using databases to identify voters, and get them to the polls. I was at the NDP convention on the weekend, and a chief Obama strategist was there, a guy named Jeremy Byrd, and uh, he was asked basically, oh, but you know, you won because Obama was so inspirational. And Byrd said, yeah, it helped. But as Byrd says, Democrats won in the United States because they had that modern machinery, databases, et cetera, that they could find voters, target ridings, and get the vote out. That's what Justin Trudeau needs now to do with the Liberal Party. It should be his number one priority over the next two years. Yes, we can talk about policy and things like that. That is going to come. He said as much, but building that party machinery is crucial. Well, the ink wasn't even dry yet on his new business cards, and the Conservatives decided to come out uh, with a new ad. I want you to take a look at it, and I've got a question for you after it. Justin Trudeau. He was born with a famous name, but does he have the judgment to be prime minister? He said he'd think about making Quebec a country. He didn't like the word barbaric to describe cultural violence against women. He even said this. Quebecers are better than the rest of Canada because, you know, we're Quebecers or whatever. <laughs> yes, nothing says good judgment like saying one region is better than another. Justin Trudeau, he's in way over his head. All right, so are the Conservatives scared here, David, or are they just kind of shoring it up and making it so that they're right on the attack on day one? I don't think they're scared, but they certainly are taking the Justin threat, if you will, seriously enough that they're launching these attack ads. And, and this ad has already provoked a great deal of reaction. Just to give you some context for that, the picture of Justin Trudeau taking his uh, shirt off uh, <laughs> was at a, f a fundraiser, a charity fundraiser for liver cancer. Uh, and, but I'll tell you what, even some journalists who were at the event when it occurred a couple of years ago raised some eyebrows, wondering if that was appropriate. So that's one thing. But the conservatives getting pushed back for using a liver fundraising uh, liver cancer fundraiser. And that quote about Quebec, that does sound like a killer quote, but in the context of that entire interview, it was an interview that aired in 99, uh, Trudeau was, was, was speaking to CTV, and essentially he was explaining his father's views. And, and what comes just before that was saying, my father passed on to me the idea that Quebecers are better than everybody else. Now, uh, you conservatives, it could be a judgment call if they're taking that quote out of context, but as we reported uh, last November, we found a video much more recent, uh, it, it, and we reported this in November, in which Trudeau said, this was his own words, it's saying Quebecers make the best prime minister, the problem in Ottawa today is that an Albertan is running the country. That was Trudeau in his own words. So the, the conservatives are getting accused of taking some stuff a little bit out of context, playing close to the vest. But the big picture is that's a meme that there's some other sort of data along the way supporting that idea that Trudeau is Quebec-centric, etc. And of interest to note today in the House of Commons, the two opposition leaders facing off against the Alberta Prime Minister, they're both from Quebec, Trudeau and, of course, Thomas Mulcair. No, and let's talk a little bit about Thomas Mulcair. You were at the NDP convention this weekend. Socialism was sort of the, the word that they were trying to eradicate, remove from the room. They were successful for, from doing so in the Constitution, but does that mean that they're going to be successful doing so within the party? Uh, they're going to try. And, uh, you know, I guess that was the other sort of historic moment in the House of Commons today. I looked down in the question period and there were no more socialists in the House of Commons. Poof, they'd all evaporated because of a constitutional change in the Democrat Amendment. Uh, they're going to try to do that. One of the interesting things I find is there is tremendous parallels right now between the Conservatives and the New Democrats. New Democrats are trying to build a moderate party the way Conservatives did back in 2005. And so far as their attempts to frame Trudeau, we've seen that the Conservatives are saying Justin doesn't have any experience. Experience, his resume is weak. That is identical to what the New Democrats are doing. If you look right now at any of the signage of the New Democrats, it's Thomas Mulcair, experience. He's been a former cabinet minister in Quebec. He's had a long history in politics. So both New Democrats and the Conservatives are ganging up on Trudeau by saying that Trudeau doesn't have experience, and the guys who lead the blue team and the orange team, they are experienced. All right, let's talk a little bit about the orange team then. Are they going to be able to sustain Trudeau mania part two? I mean, will they be able to shore him off and basically label him that way, make it stick so, so much so that they stay where they are as the opposition. 
Well, here's the thing. All we have at this point are, are several polls, including from our own pollster Abacus data, which shows that when, as Trudeau takes the job, there is a tremendous amount of goodwill among Canadians from a fairly broad spectrum. People like Justin Trudeau. They think he's an OK guy. Big caveat, they do think more style there than substance, and that is a threat to both, both the Conservatives and the New Democrats. Now, in Quebec, uh, the, the, the NDP still believes that they are, uh, are, are can be presented better in Quebec. The Liberal Party, I mentioned machinery, it, it's, there's nothing to the Liberal Party outside of the island of Montreal. Not much to the New Democrats either, but they have been building, and of course, they're the incumbents. They're less worried about Trudeau as a threat to the NDP in Quebec. They are worried about Trudeau in the rest of the country, particularly Ontario, where the polls show Trudeau is very popular. So again, their point is going to be, hey, if you want to replace Stephen Harper, there is a party with 105 seats that only needs a few more to become the government, and that's the New Democratic Party. The Liberals in the House of Commons have 30-something MPs. That's a long way to becoming government. And again, that's the message you're going to hear the NDP say. They're going to say they're the alternative to the Harper Conservatives, not the, liberal, not the Trudeau Liberals. David, I want to get your brief take because there is an election coming up in British Columbia in a month's time, just under a month's time now, I guess. Christy Clark taking to the airwaves last night uh, with what amounted to a, an infomercial, a half an hour infomercial. The issue out there seems to be trust in whether or not Christy Clark can actually sell herself to the people or resell herself to the people as one to be trusted. There is. And, and on that front, the B.C. Liberals have a long way to go. Polls that came out right after the B.C. government, Christy Clark's government, tabled their budget last month show that like a vast majority, 70 percent or something, do not trust the Liberal budget when it says it will be deficit free in a year. They don't trust the Liberals on their numbers. They have reason for this, because the last time British Columbians went to the, the, went to the polls, there was no talk of an HST. And within a month or two after Gordon Campbell won the last time around, he introduced the HST. So right now already, British Columbians have a bit of a chip on their shoulder when it comes to trusting the B.C. Liberals. Do they trust the New Democrats? Still an open question, and so you're going to see a pretty fierce battle. Uh, the platform got underway today. You got Christy Clark announcing that. But that's a problem for Christy Clark, trust. The other thing in that infomercial last night that Christy Clark repeated time and again was saying, listen, you can't vote for New Democrats when, quote, British Columbia is on the verge of greatness. Wait a minute. <laughs> Christy Clark heads a party that's been in, decade for, uh, in power for a decade. How can it be on the verge of something? Hasn't it been great for the decade that the Liberals have been running things? So that's another sort of little difficult issue that Christy Clark's going to have to deal with. She's way behind in the polls and personally very unpopular. The infomercial was the first step in trying to make her a little more popular. But as I say, she's got a long way to go. Yeah, we'll see if riding on a horse will uh, gain her any favor. David, thank you so much. No problem, Ryan.